Okay, so uh, we have this example here. Let's read it aloud for a second and then we think about it and then we start developing it. Example one, a block is initially going to the left at six meters per second and it's in the initial, just said initial acceleration is equal to positive eight meters per second squared. So initially the block is moving to the left according to this and its acceleration is positive 8 meters per second squared. The mass of the block is 4 kilograms. What is the omega, the radi radial um, frequency of the motion? What is the frequency? What is the period of the motion? What are the general equations of motion for the block? So the general equation for the x position, the velocity, the acceleration. When does the block first reach its most stretched position? When is the kinetic energy of the block twice the potential energy? So this is a generic kind of example illustrating cases where certain pieces of information are given to you and then from that you are supposed to start coming up with what's the happening to the situation and analyze the motion and then and find out the, all of the necessary information and uh, the phase angle and all of that and then, and then uh, it's also good to, to, to be able to draw the motion too a little bit, describe what's happening. Now in this case, you have here, the block is moving to the left, right? But it doesn't tell us if the block is to the right of the um, uh, equilibrium or to the left of the equilibrium. So imagine if this is the equilibrium right here, is the block to the left, to the right of the equilibrium, you see? Uh, the, initially the block is going to the left, with a speed of six meters per second, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so, but it does tell us that the acceleration is positive eight, eight right? Uh, positive eight acceleration means the acceleration is to the right, you see? So, uh, positive eight meters per second squared. See, that doesn't really make sense because we know if a block is moving to the left, it should be doing what? If, if, if the block is to the right of the equilibrium, if the block is moving to the left, it should be speeding up. Speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, right? Gaining speed. So its acceleration should also be to the left, right? So a positive acceleration means the acceleration is this way, it's slowing down. That, that doesn't make sense if it's moving to the left and slowing down. Right? So this picture is better. Here's the equilibrium. Okay? The block is moving to the left at 6 meters per second. And the acceleration is to the right. Now what does this mean? The block is to the left of the equilibrium. Okay? And the block is moving to the left. It's going to do what? It's going to slow down. So its acceleration should be to the right which means it's going to slow down, right? So that's exactly what's going to happen in this case. That means the initial position of the block is some negative number, right? X initial, okay? So let's uh, erase some of these questions so we have some room. So now we, we have uh, x is equal to a sine of omega t plus phi, v is equal to a w cosine omega t plus phi, a is equal to negative a w squared sine of omega t plus phi. So what information do we know so far? The initial velocity is what? Negative 6, right? So v at t equal to 0 is negative 6. So that's a equal to a w, okay? Then you have a cosine of phi, okay? And then uh, acceleration at t equal to 0 is equal to positive 8 which equals to what? Negative a 
w squared sine, and then you put t equal to zero here, sine of phi. Okay? So, so far, you basically have uh, the a, the amplitude is unknown, the omega is unknown. Uh, we need another piece of information. Well, we know that omega is equal to what? Square root of k over m. Okay? So, uh, the mass of the block is 4 kilograms. Uh, so, the problem should also give us one other piece of information, right? Uh, it should tell us the spring constant of the spring, or at least some other piece of information, so that from there we can uh, calculate the necessary information. Because we don't know the uh, phase angle, we don't know the amplitude, and we don't know the omega, right? So it could either tell us the initial position of the block, or it could tell us the spring constant. Let's say it told us the spring constant here. So the mass of the block is four kilograms. Let's say the spring constant K is 20 newtons per meter, okay? So then what are we gonna be able to get from there? Okay, we're gonna get, um, is equal to, um, square root of, then k is 20, the mass is 4, so omega is square root of um, 5. Okay, so that's the uh, omega there. So that's, let's calculate that here. Two point two three six. That's units of radians per second. Okay, so omega is equal to two pi f. So f is equal to omega over two pi. So if I divide that by two pi. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> You get 0.356 hertz. So uh, it's going pretty slow in terms of hertz. And then the period is equal to 1 over f. So you reciprocate that. You get 2.81 seconds. So what does that mean? That means from the situation, remember we saw that it's, this situation is not right. From the original situation that we are at, it's gonna go this way, get compressed, go all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, get stretched, and then come back, come back to the, to the initial uh, situation. This whole thing, starting from here, going here, going all the way there, coming back here, this is gonna take 2.81 seconds to take place, okay? So the period means, the time that it takes to start from a certain case, go a whole cycle, repeat to the same place that you started from, okay? So now let's calculate the rest of what we need, okay? So now we already know the omega, so what can we do here? Oh, we, could, uh, we have here uh, negative a, we have omega squared, so what is that? Just five, right? So that's negative five a sine of phi is equal to positive eight. And then over here we have uh, square root of five, uh, square root of five for omega, and then a cosine of phi is equal to negative six. And then we take the ratio of the two. Divide them. So what do we get? A and A drops. Negative 5 over square root of 5. Okay? So I'm dividing here this one. Negative, this one is 5. Divided by W, which is square root of 5. Sine over cosine is tangent. 5. 
8 divided by negative 6, negative 4 thirds. The two negatives cancel. I'm left with 4 thirds. So tangent of 5 is uh, 4 times radical 5 divided by 5 times 3, 15. So take the inverse tangent of that. Okay? And uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff, you have to be in radiant mode. So let's go to radiant mode. Then we take the uh, 4 times uh, 5 square rooted divided by 15. And then you've got inverse tangent of that, 0.53. 7, 7 radians. But that's only one possibility. What other angle is there where you have the same tangent? Okay? Remember, the tangent is positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant, right? So what other angle is there? Well, if a 0.5 radians, you have to add pi so that we get the other, the third quadrant. So you add the other possibility is you have pi plus 0 0.5377, 3.6793 radians. Now, which of the two is correct?